Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another interview of the uh, IFED Night Talk. My name is Andrea Ricci from Florence, but tonight I'm known as Andrea King. Today I have the pleasure of hosting Baldwin Marchak from Los Angeles, California, and my father Gianno Ricci from Florence, Italy. So they both do not need any introduction, so welcome. And I would like to start with the first question. So Baldwin, tell about your story. How did you end up doing what you're doing today? So Andrea, I wish I could tell you that I always wanted to be a dentist, but unfortunately that's not the case. You see, I was always pre-med and I was doing my pre-med requirements at UCLA. And one day I decided I should check out the UCLA Medical School and check out the USC Medical School. So I went over to USC campus and lo and behold, I ran into one of my classmates and I said, hey, Vaughn, what are you doing over here? He says, I'm going to the USC dental school to cut an application. I said, dental school? I thought you were pre-med like me. He says, oh no, I'm pre-dent. I want to be a dentist. I said, why would anybody want to be a dentist? He says, oh, that's so much better than being a physician. He says, you have no idea. You, you don't want to be a physician. You want to be a dentist. I said, okay, wait for me. I'll go with you. And I went with him to pick up application. And you know, Andrea, I got in and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. And that's a nice story. Uh, yeah, it's a nice story. And uh, Jano, what about you? How did you end up doing a dentist? Well, uh, I was uh, in medical school and it was my fourth year and I was very keen on becoming a surgeon. But then I realized that in order to become a surgeon, at least in those days in Italy, you had to devote yourself to the, your uh, uh, teacher and work like crazy. And then maybe uh, 20 years later, the teacher could say, Gianno, you know, I think that you are not so good. And so I will uh, select another person to become my assistant or to become a surgeon. So I decided in the fourth year of my medical school to uh, finish a, a medical school and then go in as a specialty in the industry. And then I decided that I wanted to perform as well as possible. So I decided, first of all, to go in the country where everything was at the top, and namely the United States of America. Then I said to myself, now we have to select the best school in the States. And in those days, I was lucky enough to meet uh, Henry Goldman, uh, Jerry Kramer, and so many, uh, Ruben, uh, Ruben, and many other people. And so I, uh, flew to the States and I met them and I told them that I wanted to become a very good periodontist. And so they accepted me. And since then, I have given myself to perio and with great enthusiasm. And I have con concentrated my attention on uh, uh, bringing to Italy the best possible treatment for perio. And that's why I went into Perio and I really was very, very satisfied because I was lucky to get in touch with those giants of periodontics. Okay. And uh, I guess that over there you found people that were uh, you consider a reference for you. But besides dentistry, who do you consider a reference for you in your life? Well, uh, there are several people uh, which I consider a reference in, in uh, my life. Of course, uh, it goes without saying that I love so much my children, grown-up children. And so I uh, take the reference from them uh, to check and to realize that they uh, really want the best out of themselves. And so the same applies to me and to whoever is close to us. So basically, I reference to my kids, to their willing to do, uh, do well. And of course, I, I also with uh, I refer to other colleagues, but all of them have to have the same uh, ideas, the same 
uh, approach to life, which I have, namely to be a correct person, to do my best for my patients and to share my knowledge and to learn the knowledge from other people. So this is basically uh, people which uh, I, uh, whom I refer to. Okay, and uh, Baldwin, what about you? Who are your references? Well, um, Andre, you know, what comes to mind is uh, a quote by Ralph Emerson. He says, hitch your wagon to a star. And you know what? That's what I did. I hitched my wagon to a star. And in dentistry, I, I had amazing mentors. I had uh, Yoshi Yamaguchi, who was a professor at UCLA, but he practiced a block away from me. And I remember as a young man, 25 years old, 26 years old, walking down the street one block to go to his office. And uh, Yosh was a big a mentor for me. And he introduced me to another mentor who was Bill Solberg. And Bill Solberg was the director of uh, Nathology and Occlusion at UCLA. And uh, eventually I spent more than five years uh, with Bill Solberg at UCLA. And, and, and that certainly shaped uh, my professional life, as did Peter Dawson. Peter Dawson was another one who really shaped my life in, in uh, terms of occlusion. But when it comes to hitching a wagon to a star, the one person that I would say is, was the biggest reference would be Carl Reeder. And, and I don't know if you had the uh, opportunity to know and meet Carl, but yes. uh, Carl, Carl used to um, visit Peter Scherer frequently. And so some of the older uh, graduates from Peter's program, people like um, uh, Urs Belzer and, and uh, Carlo Marinello and and, uh, and maybe even Uli Grunder and, and so on would have been exposed to Carl Reeder because Peter Scherer loved to have Carl Reeder go up there and lecture to the program. But Carl was certainly my biggest mentor, not just in dentistry, but in life. He, he was an amazing uh, individual. And unfortunately we lost Carl last year and uh, Carl, you know, was one of the founding members of AAED with, uh, with Ronnie Goldstein, and he was one of the founding members. And yeah. uh, that Carl was a big influence for me, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, going to personal features, what do you think allowed you to get where you are? Well, Andrea, I, I, I could lie to you and tell you my ability to focus and my perseverance and my hard work and... I could lie to you and tell you all those things, but I won't. The truth is luck. <laughs> now, do, do, you, do, you, do you believe in luck? Uh, of course I do believe in luck. I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time. I was lucky to get accepted to dental school. I was lucky to be where I am today. Okay. It's luck. <laughs> okay. And what about you, Jano? Well, what, do you think? Uh, what is your personal features? Uh, I would say uh, determination, the will to perform well and to do well. Uh, and this is basically what uh, brought me uh, to where I am today. Basically, I wanted to learn at the best school, try to uh, stay in touch with the best people and uh, take advantage of this uh, favorable situation to uh, try to do a very good professional at a uh, very good professional perform and and what about you both I, you both are staying away from personal life so i want i want to bring you back to personal life so and and as a person uh, what personal feature allowed you to be who you are as far as personal i mean personal life regular life with your friends with your parents with your uh, kids with your uh, fiance. Well, well, Andre, that's easy to answer because yeah. you you know my father said something to me that stayed with me my whole life, and 
if there's one thing, it, it would be what he said to me. He says, be nice to the people you meet on the way up. Those are the same people you meet on the way down. And nice. coming back to personal life, that's been my motto all my life. Be that's nice right. to the people you meet on the way up. Those are the same people you meet on the way down. Nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. And what about you, John? Well, uh, basically, uh, as I said, uh, my personal feature is that I want to be honest and uh, a straight person to whoever stays around me. And of course, for my children, for my grandchildren, I want to be uh, an example to copy or to uh, at least inspire, uh, to inspire them. And I want to uh, share my needs uh, as far as uh, love and profession and private life. Very nice, very nice. Now we are getting where I want. <laughs> and Baldwin, okay. how difficult is for you to change one of your habits or protocol, like clinical wise, you know, but also, you know, the habits uh, of uh, everyday life? You know, those two intertwine, right? Because if you change, you can relate that to life as well as to the professional life. Earlier, we talked about I graduated in 1971. So now it's 51 years that I've been in practice and we've had to make some changes. Let, let me tell you one of the biggest changes I remember. I remember graduating from dental school. We, you wash your hands before you approach the patient. because Nobody wore gloves. But in 1982, HIV was discovered. And in 1982, dentists started wearing gloves. And, you know, you, you always wore gloves, but for the people, the older fellows like your dad and myself <laughs> and Ronnie Goldstein, we started life not wearing gloves. And, and uh, to change to wear gloves was, was a difficult change. Same as going from uh, film to digital x-rays or paper records to digital records. And we learn how to cope with that. And, and uh, so it's easy. Today, we're going digital, everything. No, no more impressions, right? We're doing intraoral scans. And yeah. uh, so it, it, it's not difficult. You just have to be determined like your dad. Be determined and get it done. Yeah. So that, we, we make changes. Easy. Yeah, yeah. And then how difficult it is for you to change? Well, uh, I, uh, I don't like to change so much, but... My, one of my mottos is if you start, if you don't learn every day something, you start to become old. So since we, nobody wants to become old, I try to adapt myself and try to learn every day something, uh, which uh, may uh, uh, make my life easier or better. So I think that... Uh, I am uh, ready to change, provided there is a good change. And I, it takes me a little bit of time to find out whether or not I want to change habits or rules which have given me success. Uh, even in, uh, if I do a surgery, a periodontal surgery, yes, I can change if I see that uh, uh, there is a, uh, an improvement of the technique. But if uh, it's just to write another paper with a different uh, approach, just with one more cut instead of uh, uh, something else, I don't see the reason why uh, it should be changed. But nevertheless, again, if you uh, don't learn every day something, you start to get old and this we don't want. Yes, and Baldwin, um, what do you tell yourself in difficult moments? What is your inner dialogue? You know, my inner dialogue in difficult moments would be, this too shall pass. So I, I really think that uh, no matter what, no matter how tough it is, it, it won't always be like that. It, it's going to change. It, it's, going to, it's going to get better. So this too shall pass is what I tell myself. It's 
uh, I I have difficulty sometimes making quick decisions, and uh, that's one thing that my mentor Carl Reeder could he could make decisions like instantly, and I'm a little slower to make decisions, but. But I do tell myself, this too shall pass. And it, things change. Things will yeah. get better. Yes. Okay. And uh, John, what about you? What do you tell yourself in, in difficult moments? When I, uh, when I am in difficult moments, I try to think positive. And I tell to myself, Jano, see, you are in, uh, in a bad situation. But think uh, in a, how nice situation you are, considering all your life uh, or uh, today your uh, life. So I think that I try to oppose to bad things, good things uh, which I, I'm uh, living. And therefore, uh, this is something which really helps me a lot. Interesting. And uh, Baldwin, what is your biggest regret if you have one? Andrea, you know, when you get to be my age, there's a lot of regrets. You know, when you get to be my age, you, you automatically have 2020 vision and you see all of those things that you wish you had done. In fact, I always uh, joke about my being a, a, a charter member of the shoulda, woulda, coulda club. And that's really bad English that David, that David Clef would cringe if he heard me say that because yeah. He speaks the, the Queen's English and he thinks that American English is a foreign language. <laughs> so we, we, say, we, say, we say shoulda, woulda, coulda. And, and I, I should have done that. I should have bought more stock because if I should have bought that stock, it would have gone up and I could have been a multi-millionaire, right? <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a charter member of the shoulda, woulda, coulda club. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice that's nice I, I, I have many regrets but but uh, so be it it's it's uh, no really big regret that stands out life goes I on I see and John what about you what is your biggest regret uh, my biggest regret is maybe I have uh, done a little bit of confusion with uh, my private life uh, namely with the, my companions but after all uh, the outcome of this confusion was that I have uh, uh, four great children and uh, five grandchildren with, whom I really like uh, a lot. Uh, another uh, regret is that I, uh, I left tennis. Uh, as a 18 years old guy, I was a member of my, uh, of my team of the tennis club. And uh, I had a very good memory. I have very good memory of those periods. Then I was caught in the studies, in the uh, profession and so, and then eventually I gave up tennis, but this is one of my great regrets. I see. And now I, I'm staying with you because you mentioned this, how to find balance between profession and personal life. I mean, you said that you did some confusion, that's fine. But what about how, how do you suggest to find it? Well, uh, uh, of course, I don't have a, a, to give lessons to anyone, but for myself, I found this rule that uh, you have to uh, really concentrate in uh, what you want to get. And uh, in this, by doing this, uh, you can uh, really uh, be re regretted a lot. And so basically is stay with yourself, be yourself, and try to behave on a personal basis and on a professional basis with the same concepts, with the same approach. Interesting. And, uh, and what about you, Baldwin? Well, well Andrea, I, um, we're talking about regrets. And, and personal life. And uh, if, if I could uh, do it, think about regrets, I, I think it would have to be that I could have spent more time with my family. Yeah, I, I would uh, 
I see. Don't have any confusion. I'm still working. I'm still uh, 60 years with my first wife. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> that's a, that's a great you know, achievement. You know, son, you know my son, Chris? He's also yeah. been to the same program that you did. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, and we work together. We, we work, uh, my, my son and my wife and I, we, we work together every day in the same office. I see. Interesting. Like us, father and son. Nice, nice. Um, Baldwin, if you would have a magic wand, what would you change in your life? You know, I'm having the time of my life in dentistry right now. Mark Twain said, find a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And, and what are we doing in my office? We're milling with Emacs inlays and onlays and veneers. My new sprint rate printer is coming this week so that we can print our own provisionals and we'll be printing dentures and printing night guards. And I'm having the time of my life. If I had a magic wand, I would turn the clock back so I could be 10 years younger and uh, enjoy 10 more years of this uh, because... You know, all of the it, next week, I'm going to be doing a digital, uh, my first all digital, uh, all on six. Oh. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be doing that all digital. So, nice. yeah, if I had that magic one, I would turn the clock back 10 years and, <laughs> and enjoy that 10 more years because I am 77 years old, you know. And I uh, well, I, you, I you can enjoy have, the next 10 years of your practice. <laughs> Yeah. And what about you, Jano? What would you change with the magic wand? Uh, maybe uh, to find, uh, not now, but in the past, to have found a better balance between professional life and personal life. I remember uh, once I came back from a meeting very late at night, and my wife was waiting for me to have dinner, uh, but it was midnight. So she said, you know what? I'm going to fire all those lights. And I said, no, not the slides, please. <laughs> and so she threw the slides on the ground uh, because she was regretting that I gave too much time to the profession and to the teaching uh, purpose and so on. So basically, maybe I would like to change more, to balance more these two uh, situations. Okay. Uh, Baldwin, um, what do you do very well in your life? So look backwards. What do you do very well? In, I would say, uh, let's stay on, on personal life because as far yeah. as dentists, we all know. As far as person in your private life? I, I would say that one thing I learned, I learned to live in the moment. And and I think that that's been valuable to me. The, the ability to let go of the past and, and live in the moment and enjoy every moment, enjoy the moment that, to realize that every breath you take is a gift. Every breath you take is a gift, that every moment that you can breathe is a gift. Live in the moment. And that's my, that, that's my mantra today and, nice. and uh, that's one thing that i've learned i've learned to live in the moment nice well you know this is very interesting because right now i have the same approach and i was told this approach just recently uh, i was at a party and the lady a very old lady but very well performing and dancing as well she was almost 90 she said you know jano you have to uh, enjoy the moment, exactly what you have said. So it's very interesting. And I made uh, this my actual philosophy. Uh, so that's why we are <laughs> same age. That's why we are the same age. <laughs> you have many things in common. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, Andrea, I think that was genius to put the two of us together. Yeah. <laughs> two, two, two old guys that are enjoying living in the moment. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> So yeah. this, I'm doing this very well <laughs> now, right now. Yeah, I think that is the key, yes. And um, Baldwin, 
If you could give just one suggestion to one person, what would it be? You know, I told you earlier that my dad taught me one thing, to be nice to the people you meet on the way up. And those are the same people you meet on the way down. But if he also taught me another thing, and that's the thing that I would share with you the most is always leave something on the table for the other guy. Always leave something on the table for the other guy. Don't, don't try to take it all. Don't nice. try to take it all. That, that's, that's something that my dad taught me. So in, whenever we're in, it's in negotiations, whether it's, it's financial negotiations or just uh, uh, emotional negotiations, it's okay. You don't have to win everything. Leave something on the table for the other guy. Very nice. Uh, and Dad, what uh, about you? As far as myself, I would say be an ethical person with yourself, with the people who are around you, with the patients. Because when you go to sleep at night, you have to look in the mirror and uh, ask yourself, how did you behave today? And you have to answer, I did behave well in front of my patients, of my friends, of my children, and uh, all with all the people I love. And also, if I don't love, I have to say, you have to be an honest person. Very nice. So we are close to the end, but um, I would like to say that uh, what I felt tonight is a lot of, uh, how do you say, sweetness? I mean, uh, we can see that uh, beyond both of you that uh, uh, are considered one of the most successful people for 50 years in your profession. Uh, there is um, a very delicate personality behind. So this is very, very nice. And in, before to finish, I would like to play a little game with you. So I will ask you a very, very short one word answer on different topics. So I will go... Uh, from one to another, really quick, asking, for example, do you prefer to schedule your appointments with a traditional agenda or with a smartphone? Baldwin? Traditional. Dead. Traditional. <laughs> Equa, I mean, uh, travel-wise, do you prefer, Baldwin, nature travels or city travels? City, because, you know, some people like nature and some people like to set up tents and go camping and build a campfire. My wife thinks that's roughing it. For her, roughing it is staying at a Hilton. So I see. That definitely, is, definitely cities. Yeah. <laughs> and John, what about you? No, actually, I like nature. Nature. Travel. Do you prefer to travel by plane or by train, Baldwin? Plane. I'm much too impatient for the trains. Okay. Uh, a plane to plane cars sport car or elegant car baldwin you, you know i'm going to disappoint you here because i can't pick one because john um uh andrew i have 10 cars i have uh, wow two mercedes <laughs> so one car, for sure one wow. one, so 10 cars <laughs> can't answer so uh, i guess you have both sport car and elegant cars Okay. Well, Jan, what about you? Sports car. Sport car. Watch. Apple Watch or Rolex? Baldwin? Apple because I'm not a Rolex guy. Okay. Jano? Well, I, I am very uncertain. I would say both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brain. Do you consider yourself, Baldwin, analytical or artistic? Analytical. Definitely. Analytical. Jano? Me too. Analytical. Book. Do you prefer to read on Kindle or paper book? Oh, paper book any day. Paper. Jano? Paper book, absolutely. Absolutely. House. Modern house or classic house? Classic, because I'm not a I'm not a chrome and glass guy. Classic. <laughs> and yeah. Jano? Classic guy with some touch of modernity, or, but uh, basically uh, classic. Okay, now one of the most difficult questions. 
Baldwin, do you prefer to retire working in your office or do you prefer to plan a retirement plan? I have a retirement plan with your family. You see, you hit the nail on the head because you said one of the most difficult ones to answer. And I'm so lucky that I get to do both because I work every day with my son and my wife. And so here's my retirement in my office <laughs> working at age 77. I'm still working and I'm enjoying it every minute of the day because my wife is here and my son is here with me. That's nice. I see. And what about you, Jano? Well, basically, even my experience is uh, almost the same because my wife or my companion is not uh, with us every day, but I enjoy being with uh, my son and with my daughter, even though my son says to me, uh, I will explain to you how it works. <laughs> Well, that's a personal thing. Uh, I, I'm not going to <laughs> comment this. <laughs> uh, so it has been very, very nice. Uh, so thank you very much, Baldwin. I look forward to see you in 3D some, uh, in some meetings. Actually, by the way, in September, I will come to Los Angeles. So I might come by and say hello. Please do. And then Please I'll see do. you tomorrow morning. <laughs> and also we'll, we'll see each other in Abu Dhabi. Exactly. We'll see each other in Abu Dhabi at the IFED um, uh, meeting. So thank you very much. I will uh, invite you next month to the next IFED night talk. Thank you, Baldwin. Thank you, Dad, Jano. And I look forward to see you next month. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.